Hey everyone, it's Froggy, and I'm back again with another episode of Nicole. So this next cutscene takes place on October 30th, and I'm just going to go ahead and start. Ted is being way too anxious about this. Then again, what else is new? I place my hands on my hips as Ted pretends to fumble with his keys for the third time. Are you going to let me in or not? But be quiet. I'm trying to remember if I left anything out. I'm not going to be judging your place. What's there to be worried about? It's just the principle of the matter. We're standing in Ted's apartment complex, right outside the door of his apartment. It looks like a respectable place, everything's nicely built, and it's super clean. Much fancier than I'm used to back home. Okay, I think it should be fine. You can come in now. Dammy is a nice place. Ted turns the knob at the door and lets me in before closing the door behind him. He was totally worrying over nothing because the inside of his apartment is way more than fine. It's like immaculate. The floors are a dark brown wood paneling and the walls are a nice cream colored finish. The decoration is nice and modern too. Cool paintings, zen potted plants. Maybe I should ask to come over more often. Well, it's not like we're here to just hang out. Wait in the living room. I'm going to the kitchen. You want something to drink? No, I'm good. I hear you. Don't make a mess in there. Hey, I'm not a kid. Ted waves me off before heading into what I guess is the kitchen. I head the other way, toward what I can see of a sofa. Whoa. Now this is a living room. There's a white square rug in the middle of the room, on top of which is a sleek coffee table holding a small plate of fruit. Are those wax? I should ask Ted when he comes back. I take a seat on the sofa and place my bag next to me and gape in awe at the television. It is massive! It's one of those cool models that are built into the wall too. I spot the remote placed on the sofa, tempting. I don't think that Ted would want me touching anything without his permission, though. He might think I'd break it or something. <laughs> I turn in place so I'm kneeling on the sofa to stare out the window instead. You can see the whole street from up here. I place my hands on the sofa's back and lean forward until my forehead is pressed up against the glass. What are you up to now? My forehead squeaks against the window as I turn my head and I can see Ted standing there. He squints at me, eyebrows furrowed. Not a kid, huh? I was only looking outside. You have a nice view from here. It's okay, I guess. Ted sits on the couch, perpendicular to me. I lean forward to brace my forearms on my knees. So, what's the plan, boss? We're here to brainstorm for the block party, right? It was Ted's idea. He explained that, thoroughly, planning something out would be easier if we dedicated a set time to doing so. Well, it wasn't as much of an explanation as it was a lecture. Anyway, I'm surprised that he actually invited me over. When I suggested we find a place to meet, I didn't even have to beg him to take me here. I already have an idea. Got me thinking, got my thinking cap on early. Ted taps his head a few times to emphasize his point. Ooh, let me hear it. The most efficient way to go would be to use the store's excess stock. I was thinking we could be a sort of snack bar thing and sell out snacks during the block party. Uh, is that it? Yeah, it is. And? And? It's boring. Ted flinches as I give off a loud, exaggerated snore. Besides, people are going to be at a block party here. There's going to be tons of delicious and weird food. Deep fried anything. Anything on a stick. That sounds very disgusting. <laughs> but they're going to be having it. Why would you want a normal pinky when you can have a pinky deep fried on a stick? See what I'm saying? You lost me the moment you started talking about deep fried snacks. I lean back on the sofa and sigh. I'm saying this booth is going to need pizzazz. It's got to draw people in. A snack bar is good if we're at a sports game, but I think it's a no-go for now. Ted leans back and starts massaging his eyelids. Do you have any bright ideas then? 
No, but I like the food idea. Like, what if we served something at the block party? Something tasty. Do you think that could work? I look over at Ted, and he's still massaging his eyelids. Actually, the motions he's making are really slow and tired. It's like he's about to fall asleep. Ted? He jolts in place like he's been hit with a splash of cold water. I'm up, I'm up. Were you falling asleep? No, I was resting my eyes. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I'm focused. So he says, but as I look closer at his face, it's obvious he's lying. He looks worn out. There are shadows under the hollows of his eyes. I bet he'll get snippy if I point it out. I'll let it slide for now. Well, I was saying that we should run with the food idea and serve something at the block party that isn't from the convenience store. I don't know what, though. I can't cook anything special. I bet if we figure something out, it'd be a big hit. Everyone loves to eat. Well, that they do. Ted hums quietly and strokes his thumb against his chin. He stops. I... I might have something in mind. Tentatively, he glances away, second-guessing his idea. No, it's stupid. Come on. We don't know if it's stupid until we hear it. Besides, I come up with stupid things all the time. True. Ouch. He could have at least humored me. Well... My pa taught me how to make these barbecue sandwiches. Ted Mimes holding one in his hands. The meat's really juicy. Lots of flavor. There's also this fantastic sauce that goes with it. Dynamite taste. Are you saying we should make those to sell? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. If we can't think of anything else. Ted fidgets in his seat. Seriously, the way he explained it sounded really good. I'm gonna get hungry if he keeps it up. No, I like it. Leave it to a Texan to bring up barbecue. I ain't from Texas. I'm from Alabama. <laughs> I know, I'm only messing. Ted blushes angrily at me and throws a black and white striped pillow. Will you please focus? Okay, okay, don't throw anything else. I hold the pillow out as a shield before I hug it back into my lap. <laughs> He's so cute and he blushes. <sighs> So, if we do this barbecue sandwich thing, we'd need a whole lot of meat. It'd have to be pork, too, which means it's gonna be expensive. Shoot, we'd need a pretty penny to buy enough to keep the booth running. Where do you usually buy your meat? I can't resist my next joke. The convenience store? Ha ha, no. A guy who works with my paws related to a local butcher. We get our cuts from there. I think it's where most of the police fellas get their meat. Oh really? The whole police force, huh? I think I'm getting an idea. Does your dad have a lot of influence at the station? I never asked, but I think he's well respected. He's a good man. Why wouldn't he be? Man, relax. I wasn't suggesting anything bad. I was thinking that... You know, if his co-workers really like him, then they might lend their services for a few hours or so. How do you suggest we get a bunch of cops to work for the booth for the shop? What do they get out of it? A cut of the profits. And a really good dinner, if you're telling the truth. Ted slumps back on the sofa and furrows his brow, thinking. It'd be easy to make up for the cut if we have an efficient work system going on. I could get my pa to make the sandwiches, too. Begrudgingly, Ted starts smiling. That can only mean one thing. You like my idea. Shut up. The smile slips off subtly as it came, and Ted sits up to rub his eyes again. I think this could work. It's going to require coordination with the local police, but this... This is a heck of a start. So does this mean we're going with my idea? I smile smugly at Ted. Having him of all people approve of an idea that he didn't come up with for the second time in a row? Dang, I must be good. Yeah, yeah, eat it up. It's the best bet for a successful stall. So I figure, why not do it, okay? I whoop, tossing the pillow into the air so I can catch it in my arms as it falls. 
Don't forget that I came up with the barbecue idea. Haha, <laughs> so what? Does that make this project our baby? Ted's eyes go wide and his face flushes a deep red. It's a joint project. Don't call it something stupid like a baby. I laugh and throw the pillow back at Ted, hitting him square in the shoulder. Whatever, you spoil sport. It's so easy to get under your skin. No, it ain't. So is. You're proving my point right now. I gesture at the way he looks ready to yell, and he forces a breath, making his body go slack and relaxed. For once. I get a little intense, is all. Sue me. I think it's a little cute. I stand up from the sofa, sticking out my tongue. Was that a joke? Was I serious? I have to go to the bathroom, so you'll never know. Uh um. Ted shakes his head hastily, though it doesn't do much to get rid of the blush on his cheeks. It's just down the hall. Door's open, so you'll be able to figure it out. His tone of voice is nearly desperate. Looks like someone really wants me gone right now. Not that I disagree after I realize what I just said to him. I cast Ted a hasty, appreciative nod before following his directions and hurrying down into the nicely decorated bathroom. I guess literally everything in this house has a modern edge. But that's not important now. I called Ted cute. Ugh, I did. But it was just a joke. I think, I mean, I couldn't have possibly meant it. Could I have? Like, Ted is nice, but I've never thought about him in that way. He's my boss. But he is cool. Ted has everything together. But he is cool. Ted has everything together. He's dependable, smart, and when he does show that side of him, he can be pretty darn nice when it counts. Alright, so saying he's cute isn't that much of a stretch. But I'm sure I mean it platonically. That's what I'm sticking by, at least. After I'm finished doing my thing, I dry my hands off from the sink, then head back to the living room where I left Ted. Hey, did I tell you that your place is awesome? Because it is totally awesome, everything looks really... My sentence stops cold as I see Ted in the living room. Is he asleep? Well, either that or dead, and that would seriously ruin my day. Ted's on the sofa, lying on his side, eyes closed and breathing softly. He's hugging the pillow to his chest like it's a teddy bear. And, okay, that is mega adorable. I can't help myself. Sneakily, I take out my phone and snap a quick picture of this. Oh, I can only imagine how Ted will react. Seriously, though, if he was tired enough to fall asleep when I left for a few minutes, he should have just postponed this meeting of mine's until later. Then again, maybe Ted is always this tired. I wouldn't be surprised. I doubt he knows his own limits. Scratch that. I doubt he keeps to his limits. I sigh as I pocket my phone. Well, what do I do now? I can always wake him up, but I feel bad. Ted obviously needs the sleep. I'll let the poor guy get some rest. In the meantime, I can get a snack. Hey, we did just go over talking about delicious barbecue sandwiches. A girl gets hungry. I'll just grab a granola bar or something like that. I don't think Ted will mind. However, when I'm in the kitchen, I realize something. I'm actually more thirsty than I am hungry. Haha, <laughs> oops. I should have taken up on Ted's offer for a drink earlier. That makes it easier. Water should be enough to quench my thirst. And it's not like the stars will miss a measly cup of water from their fridge's dispenser. But if I'm getting myself something, isn't it only polite to get Ted something too? Not that I can ask him if he wants anything right now. Hmm. What do I do? I look around the kitchen like the answer lies somewhere in here, and I spot a kettle sitting on one of the stove's burners. The gears in my head start turning. Maybe Ted would like a nice warm drink instead. A half hour later, I'm leaving Ted's kitchen with two steaming mugs in my hands. When I get to the living room table, I see Ted stirring a bit in his sleep. I place one of the mugs on the coffee table in front of him. I take mine with me and take a sip as I lower myself onto the couch. Mmm, delicious. Not bad, Nicole. I guess I should try to wake up Ted now, huh? I take another sip before doing so. Psst, Ted. Ted's ears twitch and his stirring increases. 
He rolls over so the pillow rests on his stomach, and his hands are folded on top of it. Ugh, this is such a tempting photo op. It's too bad he looks nearly awake or I'd chance another picture. With his eyes still closed, I hear Ted speak. How long? Like, 40 minutes. Dang. With a prolonged groan, Ted hauls himself up so he's sitting upright, pillow tucked under his arm. He notices the steaming mug sitting on the coffee table and raises an eyebrow. What's this? Uh, sorry, I got thirsty and made myself a drink, and I thought you'd like one too. Did you make a mess? I cleaned up after myself, okay? Then I guess I don't mind much, but... Ted leans forward to look into the mug's contents. What'd you make? So there's hot chocolate, coffee, and tea. And the answer is obviously coffee. Because Ted loves his coffee. Don't be scared of it, it's coffee. It wasn't hard figuring out how to work your machine, plus I remembered. Ted leads forward to pick up the mug with both of his hands. Remembered what? That coffee is your favorite hot drink of all time. Might be your favorite cold one, too. Ted snorts into his coffee before he takes a sip. His eyes close as he relishes in the bitter taste. No cream or sugar. How I like it. I had a feeling that was how you took it. Thanks, Nicole. I really needed that. Ted smiles sincerely at me. No stammering or blushing involved. I wonder if I'm in some surreal alter universe. It'd make sense. No problem, Ted. You must be seriously tired if you're passing out on the couch like that. Ted waves his hand like he's swatting a fly buzzing near his face. Don't go and dramatize it like that. Just napping was all. I've had to stay up late to finish all my work. I'm working so much during the day that I don't have time to do any studying. It's pretty bad. You're telling me? You can't keep messing with your sleep cycle like that. Why are you assigning yourself so many hours anyway? Because I said I'd do anything to help the store. If it means working longer for more business, I'll do it. But that's... Irritation bubbles inside of me, hot and uncontrollable. That's really stupid. I regret blurting out those words as soon as I do. My eyes widen in fear and Ted lowers his mug near his lap so he can stare directly at me. What did you say? No, he's not going to intimidate me now. I know I'm right. It's stupid. You take on all this work like you don't have anyone to rely on, but hello? I gesture to myself with both hands. I can work more too. I want to save the convenience store just as much as you do. And what about your dad? You never seem to give him a chance to do anything for you. Ted stands to his feet so fast that I'm surprised he didn't spill his drink. It's only because I don't want to burden him. Of course I can rely on my pops. He's the best. I just don't want to drag him down like I did in the past. I doubt you ever dragged him down, and I doubt he'd ever not want to help you. He's your dad. That's his job. I just... I don't know, okay? I don't want to bother him, but you're right. I know you are. He lets out a long breath and runs both of his hands through his hair. Talking about this is pretty stressful. Yeah, I think it'd be better if we talked about something else for now. And luckily, I have the perfect thing for the job. I won't force you to do anything you don't want to, but just think about it. I place my mug down, then start to smirk as I pull my cell phone out and maneuver to a certain picture. But first, can you tell me what you think of this? I was thinking about posting it to my blog. You mean that roller thing you waste time on? Ted places his mug next to mine and leans forward to get a better look. I give him a few seconds to let it sink in before yanking my phone back. He lunges for it, narrowly missing. W when did you... His face goes that angry shade of red, and his arms shake as he brings his hands up as if he's unsure of what to do with them, besides wring them around my neck. Still, it's so worth it. I wag my phone in front of him before pulling it back toward me at the last second. What do you think? It's perfect for my blog, right? Nicole, you better delete that picture before I get my hands on you or so help me, I'll... 
I don't stick around long enough to listen to him finish. I take off for some other part of Ted's apartment, laughing. I hear Ted running after me soon after. I'm gonna get you, and when I do, you are in for it. I briefly look over my shoulder and stick my tongue out at him. Guess you'll have to catch me then. I know it'll only be a matter of time until Ted gains the upper hand, but hey, whatever it takes to loosen him up. But if I'm not heard from ever again, at least people will know what happened to me. And then he catches her and they make out wildly. It'd be nice. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Anyways, I'm gonna end this episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you wanna see more, just click the I at the top, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.